believe all victims. It's not the intent, it's the impact. Even though sometimes the impact is manufactured, let's be real. Every few months without fail, I know I'm gonna be talking about someone using the N-word and getting fired. Well, the N-word is one of the most contentious in the English language. The N-word. The N-word. The N-word. Actor Malcolm Jamal Warner is issuing a challenge to rappers out there. Stop using certain words in their songs. The N-word. So I, I think why I'm, I'm more against it now is because it's, it's such a, uh, it's used so gratuitously. Right. Um, it's used without regard. It's so, at this point, for me, in hip hop, I think the word is, I think and should be, there should be a moratorium on both of those words in hip hop because it's low lying fruit, it's so easy, everybody does it to the point that it's corny. Lily Gaddis, a trad wife, went viral because she used the N word. And she has since been fired from her job in a company that is owned and operated by an African American female and is also an immigrant owned business. So Lily Gaddis said a few things in a TikTok rant. Yes, she used the N word. She made a few remarks, derogatory remarks about women, about immigrants. But we all know that what landed her in that deep water was that infamous N word, that word that should never be uttered if you're a white person of course okay quick note i know that this lady has been receiving backlash not only from the left or the black community i know that she's also been receiving some backlash from conservative circles some people are saying she just wants attention i mean who doesn't nowadays and other people are saying that actually she's not a true conservative she's not a true trad wife because true trad wives don't act like this don't speak like this and so on and so forth These are valid arguments i do think that the face of conservatism has definitely changed but that's not the conversation i'm dealing with today so my question is why does this word still elicit such strong emotion there have been so many instances of people losing their jobs for saying this word even if said innocently for example a couple of years ago the former ceo and founder of papa john's pizza faced a lot of criticism resigned from his job why because he used the n-word he used the n-word during a conference call so even though his argument was that he was actually using the term to express disapproval of racism didn't land. It still had significant consequences for his reputation, his professional standing. People didn't care about the reason, the context, the fact of the matter is a white person used the N-word. And we've seen other public figures involved in similar controversies, Madonna, Morgan Wallen, Gina Rodriguez, and so many others. Hey, what's up everybody? I just wanted to reach out and apologize. I am sorry. I am sorry if I offended anyone by singing along to the Fugees, to a song I love that I grew up on. I love Lauryn Hill. And um, I really am sorry if I offended you. And of course, it's not just celebrities that face backlash for using this word. I remember the case of Carl Borge Neal, who is no celebrity. A simple man, father of two from Andover, Hampshire. Regular working citizen. A few years ago, he was fired for using the N-word during a diversity and race education training session. This bank worker inadvertently dropped this racial slur while seeking advice on how to handle situations where a black person uses that word themselves. No malicious intent, just curiosity, just wants to understand more. They're always going on about educate yourself, ask questions, strive to know more, learn the experiences. And then when questions are asked, people are shut down. So no malicious intent. He wasn't calling anyone this word. He was just asking a question. He must have sensed the vibe in the room. So he immediately apologized for any offense caused. But nope, the damage was already done. Apparently his remark left the session's leader, who's a black woman, so distressed that she had to take time off work for a whole week. And this was probably a factor that led to the decision of him being terminated. Believe all victims. It's not the intent, it's the impact. Even though sometimes the impact is manufactured let's be real um, and unfortunately that example was obviously the use of the n-word by people from the, the black community i was thinking of the word as it would be used within the community and the whole word came out um, and um, the trainer got very upset um, i tried to apologize and um, i reframe my question she became more upset um, eventually almost shouting at me and told me that if I didn't be quiet she'd throw me off the course 
So I was quiet and just stayed on the rest of the court. He went to court, rightly, and the employment tribunal ruled in his favour, acknowledging the validity and lack of malice in his question. And he was granted a substantial amount of nearly £500,000. Not bad. But I think what makes this case particularly noteworthy, and others like it, is the glaring double standard. Just mind-boggling that the very term considered a reclaimed word in one context can completely transform into a career-ending word in another context. Why are there different rules for white people when it comes to the usage of such terms? During one of her live performances, Doja Cat, she warned her audience, her white audience, against the use of the N-word. As she was performing one of her songs, the hook contained this controversial word. Watch your mouth if you're white. Now, just on a side note, this inconsistency extends beyond seemingly offensive words and has even infiltrated everyday interactions. For example, compliments. Compliments that are often intended to uplift, express admiration, simply break the ice, suddenly take a different hue when it comes from a white person. Complimenting a black person's hairstyle, fine. If you're white, Mm, there must be something else behind that. Asking someone where they're from, asking about background, expressing curiosity about someone's culture, their origins, generally considered acceptable and normal, unless of course it's a white person expressing such curiosity. For example, I often ask people I meet, whether for the first time or as I become more familiar with them, about their origins. You know, I learn different languages, I love culture, so I'm naturally curious. That's the kind of person I am. And I receive similar questions questions all the time from non-white people. Where are you from? Where are your parents from? This is so normal. It's literally seen as a way to connect with a person, understand more about them, build relationships. Yet this natural and common aspect of human interaction transforms into some form of hunt for racism when a white person is involved. Basic curiosity is not so basic anymore with white people in a picture. In such cases, these questions have been labelled and framed as racist, even turning into full-blown controversies. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Can you please not talk about when I switch up my hair? It's, I think it's beautiful. I, I know, but like as a black person, it's to me, it feels like a microaggression. I deal with it all the time at work. And you can make that face. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying, I'm telling you how it makes me feel. Everyone's different. But personally, if you like the hair, oh, pretty hair. You don't have to like clarify that it was different each and every time because it makes me uncomfortable. I just like the way you change I know this, I, I'm not looking for any excuses. It's just, it makes me uncomfortable. No wonder there's a climate of uncertainty regarding the rules of what is deemed acceptable and okay. But back to the N-word. While some argue for its reclamation within the African-American community in the US, I find myself questioning the wisdom of embracing a word that is supposedly entrenched in historical suffering. This word is supposed to carry a significant heavy historical weight deep-rooted associations with racism, oppression, dehumanization. So why are we reclaiming this? Is reclaiming this word truly empowering or does it inadvertently or subconsciously keep alive those same negative ideas that it used to represent in the past. If it truly represented the abuse and dehumanization that black people had to endure in centuries past, why wouldn't anyone choose to distance themselves from such a painful period? This argument that is somehow empowering for the black community to be able to use this vile slur, it's just packed with mental gymnastics. I don't even know where to start. Imagine, just think with me, a woman, could be a man, but let's just say a woman, she endured prolonged and systematic domestic abuse. And then she was given a dehumanizing and derogatory nickname by her abuser. Doesn't matter what kind of name it is. Does it make sense for her to cling to that word after the abuse has ended, after she's finally free? Wouldn't it make more sense for her to reject being known or referred to by that name? Even if it's her referring to herself by it, even if it's 
it's family members who are using that name for her. We'd find that odd. Either a word is inherently harmful or it isn't. If you insist on not being offended when using that word on yourself, but become absolutely livid and enraged when others use that word, then you haven't reclaimed anything. You are still a slave to that word. This whole thing about reclaiming offensive words, it's not about empowerment at all. I'm not buying it. It's more a thinly veiled power play by the perpetually outraged to wield moral superiority over others and control and police the language that other people use. Some people actually revel in keeping these toxic words alive so that they can continue lording their victimhood over everyone else. It's really just manufacturing outrage to gain leverage and attention. Instead of actually freeing themselves and moving forward, they actually cling to the language of repression as some twisted badge of honor. I hate mentalities like this. And instead of wasting energy policing words how about we start focusing on reclaiming the things that actually matter in our communities rather than throwing hissy fits when the wrong person says the n-word how about reclaiming certain parts of our communities from crime and decay how about we reclaim that culture of two-parent household strong family values personal responsibility this fixation on words and word games, yes, it allows some people to pat themselves on the back and make themselves think that they're actually doing something important. But it does absolutely nothing to improve lives and actually address the real issues that many people are facing. All this other moralizing of lingual purity is just a distraction. A distraction from the much harder work that needs to be done and more important conversations that need to be had. The so consequences of using certain words should not be based on the racial makeup of the person that's using such word. Again, if using such a word in one context is considered so egregious that it constitutes a fireable offence, then in all honesty, no one should use it.